When you board a plane, the rules are clear for takeoffs and landings, except when it comes to babies and toddlers. Under FAA rules, kids under the age of two can fly free if they're sitting in an adult's lap. The woman who used to lead the NTSB doesn't think that's safe. Deborah Herzman is now the president of and CEO of the National Safety Council, a nonprofit group. She's in Chicago. Also here with us is CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg. And good morning. Good morning. You know, De Deborah, um, I mean, it's uh, just the way families fly, you know, with a babe in arms in their arms. What's wrong with that? You know, I think it's something that a lot of people have grown accustomed to, but it's just simply not safe. We wouldn't think about holding our infants in our arms in a car at 50 miles an hour. Why would we want to do it at 250 miles an hour in an airplane? It's just not safe. You want to make sure that everyone's restrained. It gives them the best chance of surviving an accident. So, Deborah, we now have all 50 states. I mean, in the past couple of decades, have developed rules. You have to wear seatbelts for kids, use car seats, etc. Why couldn't you feel so strong about this? Why do you think you couldn't get it done as chair of the NTSB chair? Why are the airlines so resistant to it? You know, it all goes back to a very old rule. We're talking about a half a century ago, not based on any science. They carved out this exemption for lap-held children and said it was okay. It just didn't keep up with the standards that we know about restraints. 50 years ago, we didn't buckle up in cars. A lot has changed, and this is just a glaring gap in an otherwise incredibly safe industry. And Peter, you've reminded us of a plane crash that happened about 25 years ago in Sioux City that really shows how important this issue is. Yeah, that was United Airlines Flight 232. It made an emergency crash landing when it lost all of its hydraulics in Sioux City. 296 people aboard the plane, 185 died. Miraculously, 111 survived. But of those who died, there were four kids being held on laps of parents. Three of them were seriously injured, one, one killed. And when the NTSB investigated, it was a no-brainer. They realized right away that in a survivable hard G landing, nobody, nobody in this room, nobody watching this show could maintain the grasp on their kids. The kids essentially became missiles. And it was an easy fix. Provide restraint seats for kids under the age of two based on their weight. Mm -hmm. So zero to 20 pounds, a rear-facing restraint seat. Okay. Zero to 20 to 40 pounds, a forward-facing seat. Okay, so Deborah, I want to ask you about this because I have three young children. I've traveled a lot with airplanes. I just never really thought that I needed one. I figured it was safe, you know what I mean, that you didn't need. So should you be putting your kids in a car seat, a booster seat? You should bring that thing on the plane? Absolutely. Car seats, yes. Booster seats, no. Um, the reason why you want to use the car seats is they have been tested to be used in airplanes. And almost every car seat you buy, if you look on the side of it, there will be a label that it says approved by the FAA for use on airplanes. And so you do want to use those car seats. Most kids are going to grow out of the car seats by about age four or five, depending on the size, and they will be able to sit in a seat belt on the airplane can, at that point in time. Can I just say, though, I, I absolutely understand the safety of this, but I've had three kids that I have to travel with. It would be impossible to travel with my three kids and carry three car seats with me. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it would be impossible. I'd have to try, travel with two other people. But that's why the, the NTSB made an urgent safety recommendation that the FAA mandate the airlines to provide those seats. Oh, yeah. And the FAA made a statement back in 2005, mm -hmm. which is absurd. What they said was, we're not going to require the airlines to do this because if we did, they would just raise airfares and people who would otherwise fly would be killed in automobile accidents. Now, when I want the FAA to talk about highway safety, I'll ask them. This is about airline safety. Yeah. Well, and they're essentially saying the same thing today. They gave us a statement this morning. It said that they do encourage parents to use child restraint systems instead of their laps, but that requiring families to purchase tickets for children under two would, and this is their quote, significantly raise the net price of travel for those families. Yes, but you know what's interesting? The NTSB did their own research and found absolutely no correlation between an increase in airfares and an increase in highway deaths. Hmm. And Deborah, you regard this as your greatest regret in your tenure at the NTSB that you did not get this accomplished. Will you see I, it accomplished in your lifetime? I absolutely believe it will be, and I think a lot of that will be because of passengers and their convenience. When you look at harmonization around the world, the United States has different standards than Great Britain than other countries. And so if you buy a code share ticket, 
from one airline to another, parents could be faced with different rules in different countries. And that doesn't make any sense. We want to make sure that children are safe on airplanes and no parent would ever willingly put their child in a less safe situation than they are right. and you want to make sure they're safe on planes. Deborah Herzman and Peter Greenberg, thank you so much.